Hi, my name's uh, Dr. Tony Blau. I'm a hematologist. I have a form of blood cancer called multiple myeloma, and I started a company called All for Cure that aims to help patients like me. Uh, I'm going to tell you uh, about one early decision that I made uh, during uh, my treatment uh, and, uh, and the reason for that. And uh, this isn't uh, intended to imply that the decision that I made was uh, the right decision. It was the decision that I felt was best for me. But uh, many patients uh, have made other decisions. And, and, uh, and, and I'm just going to tell you why I did what I did. Uh, this is not intended to uh, provide any sort of advice for patients. Uh, if you have myeloma, if you have a problem similar to the one that I had, uh, then please talk with your doctor. Don't uh, just do uh, as I did. Uh, uh, you need to put it in your own context. So I developed myeloma in early 2015. Uh, when I developed a uh, pain in my uh, pelvis, really in the region that football players uh, get, uh, uh, get injured uh, with an injury called a hip pointer, where it just hurt a lot when I pressed on uh, the, the uh, anterior, the front of my uh, pelvic brim. Uh, and it would hurt a ton when I would sneeze. Uh, and I ignored this for a few months, uh, responded to Advil. But finally, uh, I ended up getting an x-ray and the x-ray that I got is shown here, uh, where this is my pelvis. And, uh, and uh, what was immediately apparent was that there's a huge hole right here in my uh, pelvic rim. Uh, and it, it actually, this hole is uh, almost eating through the edge, uh, the cortex of my pelvis. And so I knew instantly that I had cancer. Uh, and uh, uh, the next day, another imaging study showed that this was, in fact, uh, a really big mass. Uh, this is an image from a PET-CT scan uh, from uh, the following day, showing about a seven centimeter mass in my left uh, pelvis. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, it turned out that this was a plasma cytoma associated with what I later that day learned uh, was multiple myeloma. And so I had uh, uh, this, uh, these uh, myeloma cells scattered throughout my bone marrow, but also this big mass here in my pelvic brim. Now I had uh, an extensive analysis of my myeloma, as I've discussed elsewhere, uh, that involved a lot of genetic sequencing. And I learned that the myeloma cells in my, in my plasma cytoma in this mass uh, were uh, somewhat more aggressive than the myeloma cells elsewhere, scattered elsewhere throughout my bone marrow, and that these myeloma cells in the plasma cytoma had acquired an additional uh, genetic change called a 1Q amplification that is known to be associated with a more aggressive disease course, <clears throat> and certainly in me was behaving more aggressively. The tumor cells in this part of my body were behaving more aggressively than elsewhere. And so, uh, uh, when I started my treatment, I had an initial decision to make uh, as to whether I should irradiate this uh, lesion, uh, uh, thinking that radiation usually works really well against plasma cytomas, and it would be a way to really direct therapy to the area that was causing the most problem, or should I get uh, chemotherapy first? And as shown in my All for Cure dashboard, uh, this is really referring to the earliest treatment decisions that I made, where the treatments are shown here, labs that, that indicate whether uh, the treatments are working, reflect how bad my myeloma is, are shown in the bottom. We can click between different labs to look at different things. But, uh, but what I was really trying to figure out was, should I do chemotherapy first or should I do radiation <coughs> first? And what I decided to do was chemotherapy first. And that was really for four different reasons. The first was that I knew that my tumor had more, uh, a more aggressive genetic profile uh, than, than the myeloma cells scattered elsewhere throughout my bone marrow. So I kind of wanted to experiment on that tumor, if you will, with chemotherapy. I wanted to know does that tumor, will the cells in this tumor respond to chemotherapy? <clears throat> uh, 
uh, and that would tell me a lot. It would help me understand later on whether I could hope to control the tumor cells in this lesion with chemotherapy. So it was a way of kind of upfront testing the biology of my tumor. The, sec uh, the, the second reason that I wanted to do chemotherapy first is that I knew that I didn't just have tumor cells here. I had tumor cells scattered throughout my whole body, you know, throughout the, the bone marrow of my, my body, the bone marrow and the bones. So even though this was the biggest aggregate of tumor cells, I had cancer that was widespread. And so if I gave re radiation therapy first, I wouldn't be treating the tumor cells elsewhere. So, and I was very anxious to kind of get going on treating the tumor everywhere that it existed. Uh, the third reason that I wanted to use uh, chemotherapy first rather than radiation was that I was hoping that with chemotherapy, I might be able to shrink this tumor. And, and that would allow me then later to get radiation in a narrower, more confined region of my body. And hopefully then by radiating less of my body and surrounding normal tissue, I would have fewer side effects of radiation. And the fourth reason that I decided to do chemotherapy first is that when I'm giving radiation to this part of my body, I'm radiating a lot of my normal bone marrow stem cells. Uh, the bone marrow is the factory for blood production. Um, most patients my age with my myeloma will end up getting a stem cell transplant, and as part of that process, you have to collect stem cells from me. And so I didn't want to irradiate uh, my normal stem cells in this tissue surrounding the plasma cytoma, <clears throat> uh, and then and then so so kind of. Uh, impeding them, not you know, injuring those stem cells before I would need to collect them and use them for a later stem cell transplant. So I wanted to, to delay radiation until after I had collected my stem cells. <coughs> uh, and, and so those were, the, those were the, the reasons that I decided to wait uh, and do uh, chemotherapy before doing radiation. And uh, as shown here, this is a, this is a uh, PowerPoint slide from my All for Cure dashboard, uh, where this is my chemotherapy that I received. Uh, and what it shows here uh, in these pictures is this is the, identical to the initial picture that I showed you a moment ago. Uh, but it shows that with chemotherapy alone, consisting of Revlimid, Bortezomib, and Decadron, my mass uh, in my pelvis shrank a lot. And that was great <clears throat> because it really did then tell me that my tumor in that area was sensitive to chemotherapy. Uh, it, uh, that, so that this mass shrank uh, as my myeloma cells elsewhere in my bone marrow fell. And so even though this tumor in my pelvis had a more aggressive genetic feature, it was still responding to, to chemotherapy, and that was very gratifying. And so the way that I then worked in my uh, radiation was, is shown here, where again, this is adapted from my All for Cure dashboard. These are the same pictures that I've just shown you. But what I decided to do was give chemotherapy first, <clears throat> and then uh, proceed with my stem cell collections. So these icons are showing that I undergo a, a set of treatments designed to get my stem cells to go out into the bloodstream where they're then collected and stored, cryopreserved. And it was only after I had secured those stem cells, put them in the freezer and, 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 and kind of put them in safekeeping, uh, only then did I go ahead and get radiation to what was left of the mass that was in my pelvis. So shrinking it with the chemotherapy and then pounding it with radiation because I don't I know the tumor cells in this area of my body are have a genetically more aggressive feature and I really wanted to pound them with radiation and then after that I went ahead and did my autologous stem cell transplant with melphalan and then my stem cell infusion and this is just showing that uh, that this treatment seemed to both help the systemic uh, uh, manifestations of my multiple myeloma with a decline in this abnormal protein that's made by my myeloma cells, fewer myeloma cells in my bone marrow after this, uh, after this systemic treatment and, and autologous stem cell transplant, 
and I was able to know then that the radiation that, that the chemotherapy worked uh, and, and that allowed me to make important decisions down the road. And so again, this is the decision that I made to do chemotherapy before radiation. Many patients with multiple myeloma face similar decisions. This is not to say that uh, the way that I've chosen to do things is, is the right way or, or certainly would be the right way for other people that are facing this decision, but this is the reason that I did it this way in me. Uh, uh, and so uh, please don't regard this as, as uh, medical advice. I, I'm not giving medical advice. It's just a rationale for why I did things this way. <clears throat> I've, uh, if, if you like this video, please uh, post something in the comments. Um, uh, please subscribe to our YouTube uh, uh, page. Uh, and then uh, also, if you have multiple myeloma, please consider joining us at All for Cure Registrations Free. And please like us on our Facebook page. Thanks for your attention.